Hi, my name is Tyler Bird, and I have the privilege of serving as a pastor in Western Kentucky. One of the things I'm really passionate about is helping people know and grow in their faith. One way that we can do this is through the study of theology, and I'd like to create a series of videos that are accessible and hopefully relatable and practical in nature because oftentimes when it comes to theology people get intimidated and scared or even just approaching scripture it can be intimidating and when we talk about theology we're talking about the study of god ology means the study of and the greek theos means god so the study of god but how do we know what biblical theology is how do we know who god is and what is right and what is wrong and how to interpret uh different people's teachings and their interpretations well this right here and so in theological terms the study of the word of god is called bibliology so biblion is greek for the book and study of the book and of course the book that we're studying is the bible as a protestant i'm looking to the 66 books of the canonized scripture now, when I talk about the canon, that is called the measure, or what is accepted. So, in the early early to mid-300s, there were councils that met and agreed upon the 66 books found here. And later on, it was confirmed in the Council of Trent in the 1500s. But as early as 100 AD, the church was circulating 22 of the 27 New Testament books and were holding them as scripture. And that document that we we know about and that was found that was, again, recording those 22 out of 27 is called the Moratorian Fragment. Scripture is a miracle in of itself. It was composed over a series of 1,500 years by 40 different authors. We have over 27,000 manuscripts of uh, in ancient languages with about 99% accuracy between those copies of the New Testament. So we can look at history, archaeology, biblical criticism, or literary criticism of the Bible and know that it is valid, it is reputable, and it is a miracle. And scripture even says about itself, Paul writing to Timothy says in first or second Timothy three, that all scripture is God breathed and inspired, that it is useful for teaching and correction, and that God uses it to prepare and equip his people for every good work. So when we approach scripture, how, how do we do that? I want to give a couple of tidbits that might be helpful to you in approaching this seemingly daunting book. For over 2,000 years, the church has held beliefs that we call orthodox or that is right or true practice, or, well, that's orthopraxy, but orthodox is, that is, sound doctrine, sound teaching, accepted teaching. And we have to be able to measure that, again, coming from here. Now, what is incredible is Jesus himself gives us the promise that if we have trusted in him, when the Holy Spirit comes and indwells the believer, that the Holy Spirit, we don't need a need, we don't have a need for a teacher but that the teacher will lead us, the Holy Spirit will lead us to all truth, and he will be our teacher. So first of all, we must prayerfully seek the leadership of the Holy Spirit and seek God as we approach his word. But this is also living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. So we know that the word of God, he will encounter with us, and he will engage with us through his word. Prayer is how we talk to God, and in the Bible is how we hear from him. So we have to prayerfully approach scripture for one. And two, we have to look at it when we're approaching it, saying, is this telling me about an event or is this telling me how I should live? So is this to help me in my knowledge or is this a call to walk out and live out my faith? So when Jesus says in Matthew 28 to the disciples, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, that's just not descriptive, but it's also prescriptive saying hey go and do this so it wasn't just for the disciples but it's for us today too because we are all the disciples of god if we've trusted in him we are all learners and we're all followers if we are children of god and we're called to do the same thing but when we look at pentecost in acts 2 when it talks about the holy spirit falling as it were like tongues of fire and the these amazing miracles that were happening that that is describing an event that took place that doesn't happen every sunday when we gathered now the holy spirit is present when his people gather for worship but 
that was describing a certain event. But we also look at what Peter said at Pentecost. And he said, when the people's hearts were pricked, that he told them, in order to be saved, you must repent and be baptized. So what we're called to do is to turn from our sins, to trust in Christ, and walk in obedience in the way that he's called us to, to, to follow his commands. It says, if we love him, we'll keep his commands. So that's the difference between prescriptive and descriptive. Lastly, I want to encourage every single person, because again, we're called to study to show ourselves approved to God. Every single Christian is called to study for ourselves. So don't just take my word for it. But my hope is that I can help equip and give you some resources to go deeper in your walk with the Lord. But one thing we have to be careful of is there's a lot of influences uh, online and just through books and a lot of things that we hear and see. We have to be careful not to put our own interpretation or other people's interpretation on the text of Scripture. So we don't want to say, I want to find a verse to support my lifestyle. We don't want to do that. The religious leaders of Jesus' day tried to do that. What we need to do is approach Scripture and say, Lord, how am I called to live because of what your word says and what is true about who you are and who I am in you as your child? So there's a thing called exegesis and eisegesis. Those are big words. Simply put, exegesis is trying to pull out what the Holy Spirit intended for the original audience. So we have to put ourselves in the shoe of the original hearers and learners. So we may have to look up the historical context and, and look at what was going on at that time. So, so we might have to be like a, a journalist and interview and, and kind of do some digging and do some mystery works to connect the puzzle pieces together about what was going on when Paul wrote to the early church in Galatia or Philippi. But we can't take our interpretation in our context today and try to make that fit into Scripture. Scripture is a mold to what we're called to fit into and not trying to take our own mold and fit Scripture into it. I said Jesus is taking our interpretation, our thoughts, our desires, and putting it into the biblical text and trying to take it and treat it like a buffet. And many Christians today do that. We try to take, pick and choose the things that we do want and then don't want. And that's not true biblical Christianity or theology. So my encouragement is to prayerfully approach scripture, to question the text and to look at, is this prescriptive or descriptive? And, and to make sure that we have an exegetical approach or a true approach, the, the, the true approach to scripture to say, Lord, I want scripture to speak to me. I want you to speak to me through scripture. And I want to take your truth and apply it to my life instead of taking my truth and trying to make you do what I want you to do, God. Now, one way that we can experience change of heart and mind is by spending time in the Word of God. That could be, like I said before, a daunting task. But if you take 15 minutes a day and just spend time in Scripture, you can read through the Bible in a year. And I, I promise you that because Scripture is living and active and God speaks to us through His Word, you will encounter the God of the Bible, the God of the universe, the one that created you and me for himself. And if you prayerfully approach, you will find the answers that you're looking for. You may not have all the answers. You may not know everything after reading through it once. But you will experience life change. So that's my encouragement to you. If you have questions, feel free to reach out. But I want to make some of these videos that are about practical theology. I'm going to be using a resource called Theology Basics by one of my favorite Bible teachers, Felicia Masonheimer. And I'll be posting these um, periodically. But let me pray for you and uh, pray for me as we try to go deeper in relationship with the Lord. So, Father God, I thank you for your love and your grace. And I pray that as we look to you through your word, that we would be faithful to seek you and not seek what we want from you. But may we seek you and learn about who you are and we find more of who we are in you as we learn the truth of who you are from your word. So help us to love you well. Help us to be open to you, Holy Spirit, so that you would teach us and train us and, and call us deeper. Help us to have ears to listen and eyes to see and, and hearts that are open. Help us to love you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength and to love our neighbor as ourself, to worship in spirit and in truth. Please meet with us as we dive into our study of who you are.
We love you. We need you. We ask that you get us out of the way that you'd be lifted high, Lord Jesus. Amen.